Horse Slaughter, Part 3. This video is going to go over the ethical issues of horse slaughter, which is the really big controversial part about this topic. I'm going to go over the safety of horse meat, which is very important, our horse's companion or livestock animals, and abusive propaganda. So the safety of horse meat is horse meat actually safe to eat. Uh, it's also known as horse beef in some places where they eat it. And the meat itself is not, you know, bad for you. It actually has nutritional value. For example, it has more protein and less fat than beef. But uh, the thing is that horses usually have medications in their systems that could be poisonous if consumed by humans. And the reason this is not currently monitored by the USDA is that consumption of horse meat in the U.S. is currently illegal. Now, for anyone who doesn't live in the U.S., maybe if you are seeing horse meat on your grocery store shelves, be aware that if it comes from the United States, there is no way to know if that horse had medications such as Butte, which... Um, most horse people would know about, but that can be really dangerous. You don't know what's in American horses, so just be aware of that. But um, the thing is that if horse meat were to become legal, I personally think that there need to be some policies in place that aren't currently there. The next issue is, are horses companion or livestock animals? So first let's figure out what we're talking about here. A livestock animal is a farm animal. It includes the animals that we eat, but also the animals that work as, um, they call them an asset, which is kind of like equipment. They're working on the farm. And uh, this can also apply to something like the Amish using their horses as vehicles still. And any, any other jobs that horses can perform. There are quite a few. And then companion animals. Um, companion animals are a pet or other domestic animal kept for companionship or pleasure and treated with care and affection. So their purpose in life is very different than that of a livestock animal. They're not involved in businesses, um, hopefully, and they're meant to be part of our family. They're meant to be part of our society. So we care about them a little bit more. Now, a lot of people, especially in the United States, do care about horses a lot more than, let's say, cows or pigs. They consider their horses to be their pets, but there are also people who use horses as equipment still. It's a, that's traditionally what they were used for um, more so in the past. So in today's society, they fit under both categories, and this is the conflicting part because we don't really know how to treat them as a whole. So legally in the US, they are considered livestock. That is what they are currently right now. And the controversial debate is over whether we should change that to companion animals. And the laws that protect livestock are different than the laws that protect companion animals. For example, we don't eat cats and dogs here in the United States. And that's the big one that we're focusing on right now. But there are also other kind of quieter laws, like um, how much work they can do. I don't actually know much about them, but they might vary state to state. But just keep in mind that uh, the protection laws would change if their title were to change. Since they don't function as both... Oh, sorry, since they do function as both, that's why I was confused, there are many varying opinions, and... I think that's pretty obvious. We don't all agree on whether or not we use horses as companion or livestock, particularly your old-fashioned farmers like my dad and uh, some other people you might know. They consider that, oh, it's just a horse, you know, it's, it's got to earn its keep, stuff like that. But in my personal opinion, all views on this topic should be respected. We're not going to come to a uniform consensus. That just doesn't happen in controversial topics. But we do have to recognize that other people, people like us, have other opinions and they deserve at least to have their opinion heard or um, have it, um, some respect. And then abusive pro propaganda. This is something that I didn't actually plan on talking about with this topic, but I discovered it in my research. That this is such an emotional topic for horse owners, horse lovers, that there are more people reporting violent abuse than actual abusers. So I really 
wanted to find out how many horses are actually being abused. And when I was looking for this information, I found a lot of biased topics, uh, biased sources that were giving me bad information. They were giving me false information that was being uh, rejected by more reliable sources like the USDA. And the USDA did a survey that found that 7.7 .7 of horses arriving at slaughterhouses had severe welfare issues. That's still a large number. Remember, we're dealing with hundreds of thousands of horses, so 7.7 .7 is a large number of individual horses. But percentage-wise, oh my gosh, it's such a small number. 6% is due to owner neglect. That's previously, before they're even bought by the killer buyers, they've been neglected. And then 1.8% is due to the transportation issues. Uh, let's just assume that's double-deck trailers, which are currently banned, and they're working on, you know, getting rid of that. But the, the way that you would think about it with all the videos on YouTube, with all the graphic images, all of the websites saying don't, don't support horse slaughter and all of that, you'd think, there's so much of this stuff going on, it's a huge problem. No, it's 7.7%. That means 92.3% of horses are being treated well, they're being treated non-abusively by the horse slaughter industry. And that number, I didn't believe it at first. I'm, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't either, but that's a, a legitimate survey. I looked at it from the USDA and there aren't any other surveys because there's no, not enough resources to do much research on this topic. But just keep in mind where you're getting your information from and that it's not completely biased. Uh, the number of sites that are advocating for um, horse uh, treatment, being them treated well, the number of people that are advocating for their rights, that's how I want to word it, there's way more of them than there actually are abusers, and that's a really good thing. It means that they're very well cared about, but just keep in mind, the numbers don't entirely correspond. So to recap, we've got the safety of horse meat is right now down the tubes. It doesn't exist. The horse meat is completely unreliable, and that's a big thing that we would need to change if we wanted to legalize horse meat and horse slaughter. And we ha also have to decide, are horses a companion or livestock? And my personal opinion on this, I use horses as companion animals. I ride, I groom them, I'm happy to have fun with them, but the thing is that that's not everyone's opinion, and I don't want to take those uh, the rights away from people to use their horses as equipment, because they are valuable in that way too. And then just be aware of abusive propaganda that it's not as true or it's not as legitimate as something like an official survey which we also need more of that but just keep it in mind thank you so much for listening uh, animalethicsri.weebly.com is my website please go there for more information on horse slaughter and other topics like the Facebook page it's a good way to keep up to date with other topics and get in touch with me if you have any questions, let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks so much for watching.